Isaiah chapter 64, 3 John, the 64th the book of the Bible. O oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens, that thou wouldst come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. Now, this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ coming. And this sure did not happen to first coming. Talk about the heavens are going to be ripped open. The mountains flow. The millennium is spoken of as a flat earth. The mountains are lowered. The valleys are lifted up. And the only high place in the world there will be is Mount Zion. The throne of the Lord Jesus Christ. As when the melting fire burneth. And it says that there's a sword that comes out of his mouth. Another prophet writes about a flame burning up. The fire causes the waters to boil. To make thy name known to thy adversaries. There's adversaries when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. And he, he deals with them. He judges them. Judging the nations. 2 Thessalonians 2 8, 1 7, Matthew 13 40, and Zephaniah 3 8. He's not coming as that little innocent little baby. He's coming back as a ferocious lion with an appetite for vengeance. That the nations may tremble at thy presence. For once they're going to tremble. They're going to have the fear of the Lord. But it's not going to be the right fear. And it's going to be too late. When thou didst terrible things. Now that doesn't mean rotten things. That means surrenders, wonders. Incites terror. Like he did in Egypt. It made them fear. Which we looked not for. Thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. So they, they begin to melt like wax. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear. Neither have the eye seen, O God, besides thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth for him. Colossians 3 1 and John 17 21. No one's really heard God. No one's really listened to Him. No one's really obeyed. No one really knows what the eternity holds. You know, we know more about hell than we knew, know about New Jerusalem. We know how a man will suffer in hell for eternity. We're given an account that a man in hell. But what will life be in New Jerusalem? Besides, I mean, I know we're going to be praising the Lord, but is it all singing? Will we go rest in our mansions? We say, you know, go talk to the saints and stuff like that. Will that happen? Describe what the gold streets will be. What will gold be in eternity? Pure gold. What is pure gold in the eyes of God? Thou meetest him that rejoices and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy way, behold, thou art wroth. Second advent. For we have sinned. And those in continuance, and we shall be saved. Israel will be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing, for all of sin. There is none righteous, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Well, you get rid of filthy rags, you don't keep them. And we all do fade as a leaf, our life is just... We're here for a time and we're gone and fall. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. You know, there's that leaf, leaf that's on a tree, it's living and it fadeth. 
then the wind just blows you away. And there is none that calls upon thy name. Go in a public ministry, any of the public proper public public ministries that there is, knocking on doors, street preaching, passing out gospel tracts, just dealing with people one on one. There is no one that is searching for God. They may tell you they're searching, but they're not. Because they would find God. Even when you were searching for God, God had to send someone to you. With a Bible. Very rarely will you find someone who's actually really searching for God. Very rarely do you have someone come walk into a church Sunday morning with the purpose of being saved. I mean, if they were searching for God and they were looking for God, wouldn't God say to them, go to that church and be saved? How come Cornelius didn't go to Peter himself? The angel told him, go get Peter. He should have went went to Peter. There's no man that's really looking. And again, God had to send him the angel. You mean to tell me that the, the fame of Peter, James, and John, and all of them has not reached his, his ears yet? The Ethiopian eunuch, he says, travel on, God sent him Philip. Now he was searching, he was reading the scriptures. But he just came to Jerusalem. What was the, and leaving Jerusalem, what was the uproar? Here's this guy who proclaimed to be God. He crucified him. In three days, they, they spoke of him rising from the dead. And, you know, all the dead uh, Old Testament saints were walking around, this and that. And he walks away reading Isaiah 53, like, huh, oh, what's all this about? If he was really searching for God, wouldn't he be going knocking on the door of James and John and Peter? See, God has to send people after us. It took a nagging grandmother to get me to go to church. And it took a man of Joe Caswell with an open Bible to show me what to do. Was I searching for I was looking for God, but not really the God of the Bible that is the proper God. I was looking for God who just answer all my prayers, and if you didn't answer my prayers, I didn't need you. I was looking for a God to, you know, give me peace and give me answer to prayers, and that's totally fine with me. Before I got saved, I wasn't interested in going and witnessing to other people. I didn't even know what witnessing was. You know, people look for God like a a thief looks for a cop. There's there cops are all around. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Yeah, I'm gonna rob this house tonight at six o'clock. Make sure the cops are there to catch me. You know? Adam and Eve, God came down and they hid. David thought, oh, no one saw what Bathsheba and I did. Nathan, step up to the plate. Solomon builds his wonderful temple. And he falls for other, go for other gods. He didn't seek God about his trouble. He didn't say, God, I'm falling in trouble here. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. And that's the nation of Israel speaking of God as a father. We are the clay. Now the father here is, is the creation. He created them. He made them. He is the potter. They are the clay. Well, they're not turning out to be the vessels that he wanted them to be. Let's say God wanted them to be a pot. I don't know, pot, vase, whatever you, I don't know what God had intended for Israel as a vessel. But let's say he wanted them to be a pot. 
What kind of pot? I don't know. Probably a pot that carried wine from the grapes of the vineyard. So let's look at Israel as a wine pot. You know, like those wine pots that Jesus said filled with water to the fullest and meet out the, the wine to the to the people at the wedding. Let's, let's say God wanted them to be a wine pot. I like that. Okay, God has put them on that little thing to turn. And I should know the name. I don't. And he's molding it. Well, if you read the Old Testament, kings, both kings, both chronicles, judges, numbers, Nehemiah, that piece of clay, you ever seen this modern art out there where the eyeball is up here and the belly button's over here and the mouth is down where the foot should be and it's a triangle and it's a circle and it's a rectangle and it's a scribble and it, it's not art. It's not a picture. I don't care what I don't care what kind of art. It's not art. It's not a picture. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's on the wall. That's what Israel is. What is it? It's because they're off doing their own little things. Instead of being a pot, you know, one's over here is a square, the other one's over here is a circle, the other one's over here is a squiggly line, one's over here with an eyeball, one's over here with a belly button, one's over here has got a toenail, one's over, and it's like, it's a messed up picture. And it's a worldly picture, because that kind, of, that kind of art is a worldly kind of art, because it's nothing. And that's what Israel is. They are a blue bob on the on the in the in the master's hand. They did not do what God wanted them to be. Or here's this great big wine pot in Israel. It's a big hole in the bottom. This one doesn't there shouldn't be a hole in the bottom. They are not what God intended because of their sins. Thou art potter. Really? God wanted you to be a fine vessel. He wanted you to be smooth. He wanted you to be useful. He wanted you to be handy. He wanted you to be a, a container for him. And they got rocks and sticks and hay and gunk and junk in the clay called worshiping the stars, worshiping gods, killing their children, making making friends with the with the nations that should not, uh, destroying the temple, using God's money to, to, to hire other armies to help them out, not relying on God, da 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 da. I told a guy last night my cup of water they gave me and he says the Lord's using it for the ministry. I said if I gave you this cup right now and you knew it came from the sewer, would you drink from it? He goes, no. I said, but a lot of people, their lives are in the sewer and they expect God to pick them up and use them. You can't. I said, it's like a fork that has last night's uh, lettuce and last week's roast beef on it. It's going to stay in the sink. You can't use it. And thou art potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. Israel's got to come to the realization one day that, you know what? We have done it our own way. Have you heard that? We have been on our own outside of God too long. Now let's just jump on that thing. Let's let him spin us around. And let us be in his hands. To be what he finally wants us to be. And I, the guy was really shocked because I said, you know, I didn't really, you know, this illustration really does shock, but I said, you'd rather be a clean, what was it called now? I said, you'd rather be a clean chamber pot for God than dirty silverware. He looks like a chamber pot. Chamber pot. Yeah. I mean, a chamber pot is not that advertising of a thing but you know what it has its purpose 
And whatever God has designed you to be, if you fulfill the purpose that He wants, then God can use you. But He can't use you if you're filthy or if you're a plate, you got a hole. He can't use you as a as a glass if you got a crack. Israel needs to, to learn that you know what we need just to be in the object of God's hand and let Him, our Creator, let Him make us what He wants us to be. And He wants them to be a light to the world. He wants them to be that city on the hill. Why do you think he had them make that wonderful uh, temple that shined of gold and everything? That all the world could come and see. You look at any picture of Jerusalem and you look at that picture, there's that dumb of rock standing out. Oh, there it is. That was supposed to be the Jews. That was supposed to be the temple. They're supposed to be, we're, we're supposed to go to Jerusalem. We're supposed to find God in Jerusalem. When the Gentiles come into it, like the Queen of Sheba, and she walks up to a Jew and says, where is God? It's you to point to where the priests are in that temple. To go there. And that would be no shadow of a doubt that, okay, I see where I'm going. But, when you got to the temple, what did Jesus find? They made a marketplace. They made a shambles. They made it, made it a mess. God had to destroy it twice. And think about what Satan is going to do with the next one. They are clay that is stubborn. It is clay that is filthy. You know, he, uh, uh, power's got to go through when he works that machine. He's first he's got to take out any gunk in the stuff. Then, as he's working it, he may find a a a, a piece of hay in it. He's got to stop it, take it out. He may find a pebble in it. He's got to stop the wheel. He's got to take that pebble out. Then he's got to go back and smooth that out. And he may have to change the design of what he wanted because of that sin, I mean rock, that was in the life. And he realized that sin, when you get that crap in your life as a vessel in God's hand, God's got to stop. you got to get that sin out of your life. you got to confess it. Put it under the blood. He will remove it. And you know what? He's got to do some work to that piece there. To get it back looking nice. And you may not been, be the shape that you were supposed to be in because of that sin. Israel has a vast history because of their sin and it's not good. You know what God told David about his sin with Bathsheba? You're going to cause the Gentiles to mock me. You know you can go online and you can find a video, David and Bathsheba. That's the Gentiles mocking a man in the Bible. They didn't do that for educational purposes and learning the Bible. They did. Uh, look at look at David, the great man of God. He's gonna sit. In, he's gonna sit on David's throne. Look what he did with someone else's wife. That was a mockery. Be not wroth, very sore. He's going to be in the tribulation time of Jacob's trouble. O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. It's going to be seven years. And I think even Jesus says something about except the times be shortened, except the, the elect. What do you mean? The time's going to be shortened. Neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. After the Lord Jesus Christ come, verses 1 and 2, the prayer, verses 1 and 2 and 3. That's a prayer. Come, Lord. Israel's going to get right. After the Lord come. Don't you think they're going to get right before? 
they're running to Sally Petro or wherever that place that God has prepared for them, Revelation 12, because they now know who's sitting in that seat, and it's not God. And their Jewish blood is being shed by being beheaded and drinking at the Mass in the name of Satan. They're running for their lives. They are in a panic. Now they're going to be praying for God to come somehow in some way. They met the other God. They met the God they've been serving 1st, 2nd Kings and 1st, 2nd Samuel and 1st, 2nd Chronicles and Judges. That's the God we've been serving. We don't want him. He wants us dead. We want the Lord Jehovah. The holy cities are a wilderness. What they are today, the Holy Land. It's a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. That's why I'm not interested. That's not a Holy Land. The Bible says, the Jews say, it's a wilderness. Jerusalem is desolation. Lamentations 5.22, 1 Thessalonians 2.15, Romans 11.25-29. That's Israel today. And that's going to be Israel when they're in Celebitra. Now, I don't know if the Santa, is the Santa, Santa, Santa Claus, the Santa Christ. I don't know if the Antichrist is going to fix Jerusalem up so it looks grassy and stuff like that. But eventually it's going to be looking like what it is today. Or it's just going to be the same. A wilderness. Our holy and our beautiful house. The temple where our fathers praise thee is burned up with fire. Not in Isaiah's time. Nebuchadnezzar comes and burns it up. Titus comes and destroys it. Now, I don't believe that temple is destroyed with the Antichrist. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ comes and Cleans it up. Like you find uh, the kings of Judah doing three or four times. Three or four kings cleaning that temple and fixing it up like the Lord Jesus Christ will. And our, our pleasant things are laid waste. Lamentations, you'll find that. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Will thou hold thy peace? And afflict us very sore. That's a Jew speaking the truth. How long, O oh Lord? How long? Seven years. Three and a half years of tribulation and three and a half years of great tribulation. If they read Daniel and Revelation, they'll know. Problem is. By the time you get to Revelation chapter 12, most of it's most of it already has happened. 